right? I'm on my stage file here. I got all of those from my asset files, just playing with opacity. So all I'm doing is playing with opacity of different assets to reveal things at a different rate. And this is how we're going to animate it in this project. So I'm going to save my work, both my stage and my assets. And if I go to the directions, you're going to see that we will use PhotoP to build each keyframe. So that's what we're doing. And the site easy, easygif.com maker to animate the keyframes together. That can be just your keyframes to make a quick animatic or your finished animation that has your keyframes and your in-betweens. So what I've done is I've created in PhotoP, in my stage file, eight layers which are basically just getting me to my first keyframe. So, this is that site, right? And I need to choose the files. The files need to be either GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs, or other file types. We're going to upload them as JPEGs. So what do I need to do with each of my frames from my stage file? I need to save them as individual JPEG files. So we get pretty fast at this. We just say file, export as JPEG, save, right? And then we turn it on here. And you can see it's in downloads right there. And then we go turn on the next layer. We say file export as JPEG. Your wrist gets really strong. Save. We didn't change the name or anything, but this is handy because it's the exact same name and the exact same file type. Instead of writing over it, PhotoP gives it a number at the end, just like it does when you make multiple layers. Do it again. Export as. You just have to kind of keep thinking it through as you do it so you don't make a mistake. Do it again. Export as JPEG. Save. Do it again. Export as JPEG. Save. Do it again. Export as JPEG. Save. This is called running an animation test. We're just going to see how how the animation process works so you can kind of have it in mind. You do not need to do this until the end. Save and then last one. Remember all of my layers in the stage file are all at 100%. File export as JPEG save. Okay now I'm gonna make a little folder in assignment 3. I'm gonna call this my test frames. This is optional, but that's where I'm going to keep these. These are just tests for now. I'm not fully committed because I want to see if these can do what I want them to do. So I move all those JPEGs in. There's eight frames. And the only one that's out of place is the first one, which is just the way it's going to be. Now I go to this program and I'm going to choose the files. I'm going to find them from my desktop in my assignment. It's all about being organized. Assignment 3 in my test frames folder. And I'm going to select all of them. And they're going to come in. I can change the order after I've uploaded them. So it's going to give me eight square files, all the same resolution. They're eight inches by eight inches by 150. Haven't used this in a while. Come on. Okay, I'll try to do them in order. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't doing anything for me. Okay. 
And as you can see, it says it should be empty, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Upload and make a GIF. Hmm. Do you need like 10 computers to upload? I do. You shouldn't need 10. I can add two more. So I'll just go back to the beginning. Oh, here, I'll go backwards. Just to see, but we shouldn't need a certain number because I added additional. There we go. So I'm just impatient. All right. So this has all eight frames. It's now brought them into memory. And you can see that it has what it calls a 20 delay. So the delay time is, this is what's a little confusing. It's 1 20th of a second. So that means five frames per second. I'm going to change that to being one thirty-third of a second. So it's going to be three frames per second. I want to loop count it forever. So I just want it to keep playing. And I don't want any effects. So just make a GIF. This is my test. It does work. You just got to be patient. Because for GIFs, these are pretty high resolution. Okay, it takes a little while before it gets up to speed. And so this is what it's looking like. Make sense? Now, this has no movement to it. All this is is cross-fading, having things fade in. But it's working so far. And what I was going to decide is if I wanted my eyes to move as the cat starts to come in. And I think I do. So that was a good reason to test it. So I'm going to go back to Photopea, go back to my stage and say, you know what? I don't like these frames anymore. So I'm going to move these to the trash. But I know how I got them. And this is why we build in these two, in these two uh, files. So now I'm going to rebuild those frames with my assets. I'm going to do them a little differently. I'm going to start my cat at 25. And this time I'm going to move the eyes back towards the center. like that. And then I'm going to do what? I'm going to say layer, flatten, command A, select all, command C, copy, go back before I change to my stage and click on the history before I flattened. And then command V, paste. Come on. There we go. And then command S, save. Right? And then Command S, save if, if you want. Now, the next one, I'm going to move the cat up to 50%. And this time, I'm going to move the eyes from there, which is where they were, over to here. Okay? And then I'm going to layer, flatten. So I'm just doing this little movement. So you start to expect movement from the eyes as it reveals what they are. Command A, Command C, go back before they were turned on. And then Command V on the stage. So this little difference is the eyes fade in and then they start to move a little bit as the head appears. This is called activating the character. And now I'm going to move them back to that center position and I'm going to move the cat up to its full opacity which I've decided I'm going to keep at 75. I like that. So, layer, flatten image, select all, command A, command C, copy it all, 
go back before I flatten the image in the history, go to stage, command V. Now that's my first frame. Now I start thinking about my second frame. I'm going to introduce a fish. I have to decide in my assets. So I'm going to save my stage, save my assets. This is the position. Now let's introduce a new asset. And which fish am I going to use? I'm going to use the little minnow fish, this one. So I have to clean it up. I have to bring it in. That size looks pretty good, but I'm going to use my compositing skills, duplicate it out. It's all within the eyes. I've got to pull it out from the eyes. I can use command right bracket to move it up and out. Come on, photo P, work with me. There we go. Delete the smart object. And then use magic wand, select around it. Turn off contiguous and cut it out. And I have a one pixel feather. This isn't about making it believable. It's just about having clear, recognizable stuff. So my goal is with this fish is to have it travel that direction. So I need to flip it. So option command T to get to free transform. I can also find that under edit. Flip horizontally. Right. I think it might be fun to have these fish travel more than just straight back and forth. So I'm going to start the fish here. And I'm going to label this guy small fry. And then, before I start making frames, I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to figure out my whole movement cycle of the fish. So it's going to go from there to here, duplicate from there to here, because I want it to be a fairly even rate. So you see where the tail is versus its head. It's pretty similar each time from here to here. It's okay if it's a little jittery. Duplicate from here. Yeah, I think that's all. I don't need that last one. So it's a four frame movement cycle. I want to see how that works. So for the first one, it comes in like this and I want to move the eyes. It's going to start paying attention to it. So, I'm going to save it here, and then I'm going to say Layer, Flatten Image, Command A, Command C, go before I flatten the image, click on here, Command V. Wow, it just glitched on me, so it gave me lots of copies of it. Right, so you see that? That's what happens. <laughs> that works. Next. I turn that one off and I turn these ones off. And I'm going to keep that original eye position. And now I'm going to say layer, flatten image. First of all, it's helpful to save it here. And I say uh, layer, flatten image, command A, command C, go to my stage, command V, paste it in. And now I get to get a sense of how that movement's going to work. Does that make sense? You see how the eyes move with it? I think that makes sense. Let's finish it out. Go back before I flatten the image in my history. Go to the third fish in the movement cycle. And then I'm going to start moving the eyes again. So I'm going to start following the fish. Layer, flatten image, command A, command C, command V. And then move it before I flattened, 